Hi, good morning. My name is Mike Whitaker. I am one of the marriage pastors at Audacious and welcome to Audacious Devotionals. Uh, I also serve on the protective services team along with my wife, Wendy, so you may have seen us around. But without further ado, I'd like to just get into our devotional for today, which is Proverbs 27. Now, I'm going to read through it, but by all means, pick up your Bible and get going with me if you want. OK, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Let another praise you and not your own mouth, someone else and not your own lips. Stone is heavy and sand a burden, but provocation by a fool is heavier than both. Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. He who is full loathes honey, but to the hungry even what is bitter tastes sweet. Like a bird that strays from its nest is the man who strays from his home. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of one's friend springs from his earnest counsel. Do not forsake your friend and the friend of your father, and do not go to your brother's house when disaster strikes you better a neighbour nearby than a brother far away. Be wise, my son, and bring joy to my heart. Then I can answer anyone who treats me with contempt. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. Take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if he does it for a wayward woman. If a man loudly blesses his neighbour early in the morning, it will be taken as a curse. A quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping on a rainy day. Restraining her is like restraining the wind or grasping the oil, oil with the hand. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. He who tends a fig tree will eat its fruit, and he who looks after his master will be honoured. As water reflects the face, so a man's uh, heart reflects the man. Death and destruction are never satisfied, and neither are the eyes of a man. The crucible for silver and the furnace for gold, but the man is tested by the praise he receives. Though you grind a fool in a mortar, grinding him like grain with a pestle, you will not remove his folly from him. Be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds, for riches do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. When the hay is removed and new growth appears, and the grass from the hills is gathered in, the lambs will provide you with clothing, and the goats with the price of a field. You will have plenty of goat's milk to feed you and your family, and to nourish your servant girls. God's word is just so alive and there is so much in this passage that I'm going to have to pick through a few choice bits this morning. But what I want to do is start by saying this. And um, my wife's not here at the moment, so I might get away with this for a, uh, until she sees the video. But sometimes when we're driving along, we can be driving somewhere and you can amen this if you've had this experience comes out with a statement that is just sort of plucked out of thin air and it's it's kind of aimed at you as though you understand it and this has happened several times usually if we're driving down the motorway and what it is it's 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 Wendy having a chain of thought in her head and then verbalizing a part of that and expecting in that moment for me to have understood all the process that's gone before it. And um, I don't think it's the last time I'll experience that, to be honest. But when I first read uh, Proverbs, I just read it verse by verse. There was so much to take in through the whole book of Proverbs. And taking this particular chapter just on its own merits won't do you the best service it's best to look at the context there is so much because this particular proverb uh, chapter should i say in proverbs 27 
is all about wisdom for living. And I think this is this is so good, so good to spend time on and maybe more time than we have today. So I'm going to try and give it a bit of context to glean the gist of the chapter. Uh, you most certainly could spend, like I said, more time than we have going through each of these verses in turn. But I want to ask God to bring whichever part of this message he wants to life for you. So I want to ask Lord, quicken your word to us today that it might be living and active within us and provide wisdom we've been looking for so that you might be glorified. I think the Bible encourages us to seek wisdom. In Proverbs 4, 1, to seek wisdom, to get wisdom. In Proverbs 8, um, it says on the heights and beside the way at the crossroads, pivotal points, she takes her stand beside the gates and in front of the town at the entrance of the portals. She cries out. This is wisdom. We need wisdom. If ever there was a time we need wisdom, we need it now. But we don't we shouldn't just be finding ourselves in a crisis and then crying out to God and say, God, give me the wisdom that I need. I'd rather encourage you to get wisdom as a routine, a routine part of your daily life. Ask God for wisdom. That can be wisdom in relational terms, in financial, career, social. Um, you know, I once heard Tommy Tenney say, do you ever think heaven would run out of oil? And he was talking about the, the, um, the widow uh, back in the Old Testament. Um, and it just made me think, I was just reminded of it, and I just thought, would God ever run out of wisdom? Would he ever run out of wisdom for what you need? Would he ever run out of wisdom if you were to ask him ten times a day? The answer is no. God has sufficient for what you need, and to call on him is the best thing you can do. So, Proverbs 8, like I've just said, wisdom calling out these were all very public places and remember i'm talking about the context here for what we're going to look at in a moment the context is people needing the wisdom of god needing god's counsel for for everyday situations whatever those situations were there is wisdom in the world and and that is i, I would use the word common there is a common wisdom but then there is the wisdom that comes from God, which is an uncommon wisdom. And trust me, you need this. There is a wisdom from the world, but God needs to be sought at every opportunity. So we need to look for wisdom. We need to listen for wisdom. In Proverbs 9.10, it tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To fear God is to honour him. To fear God is to include him. To fear God is to know that we, our very existence is depend upon him. Uh, it's not the kind of fear that leaves you cowering. It's the kind of fear that, that encourages you to show respect and to honour him and to bring honour to him. Um, there's tons of times where I can recall being in situations of feeling really out of my depth and undecided about what to do, um, trying to weigh and calculate every possible scenario. I don't know if you're like that, but that's what uh, kind of makes me tick. Always being cautious, considering the impact of the decision in front of me and how it might affect all those people around me. There's one piece of advice, if I could leave it with you today, I would say this. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God who gives generously and to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. There's no maybe in that. There's no condition attached to it if you're good, if, you're, if you've followed the rituals, if you've observed certain practices. It's not conditional, just like the love of God. His wisdom is unconditional and and it's it's unreserved. It's held for you and it's there for the asking. He says, ask and it will be given to you. There's no maybe. You can't qualify for it. So that it's, it's not on your part. You only need to ask and God's wisdom is there for you. And it says, um, well, 
would God send it to you like um, just a, a quick whisper and you know if you're, you're in the busyness of a situation I'm sorry God I didn't quite hear that he doesn't turn around and say well I'm really sorry but yes for wisdom that was it and if you weren't listening then tough no it's there because he wants you to have it God will respond and, and his word says he will give generously now, I don't know what your interpretation of generous is, but I know what mine is. And I understand generosity. And if God says he's going to give something generously, then I would hold my hands out and be saying, God, you just pour that wisdom into my situation, into my circumstances. Our amazing God wants to give you the wisdom you need at every crossroad you reach. Your decisions affect your destiny. And asking for wisdom it's a prudent thing to do. So every point of decision, ask God. Start your day by asking God, God, I need your wisdom today. If you're going into a meeting, God, I need your wisdom here. If you're dealing with another person, God, give me your wisdom. If you're making a decision about moving house, about moving job, a career, financial, family, it doesn't matter get God's wisdom make it a part of what you do the uncommon wisdom not just the common sense see the busyness of life can easily separate us from taking time to seek God therefore we must build the habit at the start of a day before any decisions in work or career or family or ministry or finance seek God get his wisdom just going to go back to Proverbs 27 to finish proverbs 27 offers us an uncommon wisdom wisdom from god the first half of this this chapter up to about verse 16 really extols the virtue of who you have in your world so like i said i'm, I'm kind of cherry picking bits from this but there's a lot more in this chapter than i can do justice to in this time but i want to say this it's who you have in your world that makes a big difference to how god's wisdom can actually impact you firstly the, the the passage encourages us not to be brash or flippant in our attitude or even to be self-affirming it says rather let others do that it's better if it comes from other people than you saying oh look at you know you get the message then to consider who you let speak into your world because there are some who won't take you in the direction of God but others will bring you wisdom even when they know you don't want to hear it. It's the wounds of a friend. They're faithful. They'll bring you to the point that God needs you to be at. We don't need flattery. We don't need the kind of stuff that people would, would give you that would really not be what you need in a situation. Neither use nor ornament, as my uh, grandmother used to say. But the wounds of a friend are faithful surrounding yourself or having people in your world that, world that you can go to when you need wisdom and just bounce off them they are worth their weight in gold so have those people around you the second part of the chapter verses 17 down to 27 is great practical wisdom as iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another that's what i've just said there is so much here to spend time on but i want to draw uh, just a couple more things out before i finish and one um, verse, around verse 16, uh, drew my attention. The purity of the human heart is tested by giving them a little fame. Do you know, um, I was listening to Pastor Sophia just recently about, uh, recently about the things done in secret, about the things that we do in the shadows where nobody sees and how important it is that because God sees all of that, those who serve in the shadows do what is right when no one is watching. This is honouring to God. This is really honouring to God. And I just said that really these are the people that would stand this test. Stand the test of fame when God prepares things in, in, the, in secret, ready for a time and a place. Just like a seed is planted in the soil, waiting for its moment, waiting for the season to arrive. And, and I feel that God really needs wisdom in many of us for the season, 
for the timing, for what is coming. Um, and these people who serve in obscurity, it's right living, serving God who sees everything. And finally, I want to say, that just looking down at, uh, at the last few verses of this passage, to get wisdom and pay attention to the things that matter. Leaders and those who aspire to that role. I, th I feel this is a word for you. Know your sheep by name and pay careful attention to your flocks. It doesn't mean you have to know everybody in, in your church, but rather to be responsible in God's eyes for what he's entrusted you with or what he's entrusted you to do. That's where you need your wisdom. That's where you need your uncommon wisdom. That's where you need this proverb. And don't be blasé. Don't take them for granted. Your resources are in your relationships. I want you to have a blessed day, blessed week. Your hashtag, I will ask for wisdom. I just want to finish by praying for you. Father God, we just want to ask for that uncommon wisdom that comes from you. Father, we know that you want to give that wisdom abundantly into our situations. The only thing we have to do is ask. So Father, my prayer today is that let everybody that hears this message ask for wisdom, no, but not just for today, for tomorrow, for the day after. Father, I pray that it will be part of our habit. In Jesus' name, amen. See you later, audacious. Have a great time.